Hello and welcome to our first ever IB online lecture. Today we're going to start our next topic. Um, Unit 12 is all about energy production and specifically today our focus is going to be uh, to overview the different sources of energy that you've probably already heard of and we're going to be focusing on in more detail later on in this unit. So today we're going to focus on this energy sources overview. Now to start us off, I think it's important for us to start with a conversation of what is energy actually used for? There are really four main categories of usage for the energy that we talk about in this energy production unit. The first is residential or commercial. So this is like using natural gas to heat your home or natural gas if you have a gas stove. Industrial certainly uses a lot of energy in producing products like paper or forging different metals. Um, obviously need very high heat and that heat comes from different sources of energy. Electric power is the one that we think of most often if we talk about renewable resources and the, the desire to get away from fossil fuels. A lot of time that conversation is specifically about electric power, um, but we'll go back and forth between other types as well. And then of course, transportation. Um, this is another very, very big one. Uh, right now there is one clear leader in what our energy source is for transportation as petroleum or gasoline. Um, but we'll talk a little bit as well about some of the new technology that allows us to kind of combine these two, of electrical power and transportation. Now, where our energy comes from um, is a big question that there are different types of energy that we typically harness from our Earth. Uh, typically, our, our energy has, for the most part, come from fossil fuels, and that'll be a huge part of our topic. Actually, our next class lecture is going to be all about different types of fossil fuels and the pros and cons of those, but I expect that you know these different main sources of energy and the relative global consumption of each of them. So you should be able to list the top five in order, and that top five starts with oil, closely followed by coal. These are both sitting around 30%. Oil is a little higher. Natural gas is next, then biofuels, nuclear, and hydropower. These top three, you probably recognize as being our three main fossil fuels. Um, we'll talk about them, obviously, in more detail later on, but know here that oil and coal are the, the top contenders. They're used for different things, and we'll talk about that as well. Um, but they both sit around a third of the overall energy consumption. Natural gas is sitting around 20, but then these next ones I think are important to talk about as well. Biofuels, if you're not familiar, are any energy that's made from burning something that was once alive more recently. So, for example, burning wood is an example of biofuel. Uh, ethanol um, is typically made out of corn or other plants. Um, that is a biofuel as well. Um, we don't consider coal and oil biofuel, even though at one point they were living, uh, the scale of that millions of years going through the process of compression um, no longer categorizes that as a biofuel. Nuclear, you should be familiar with as well. We talked a little bit about that last unit. We're gonna dig in a lot deeper to how nuclear power works this unit. That accounts for about 5%. Um, for a long time, that was increasing with recent uh, nuclear disasters, especially in Fukushima. Fukushima in Japan, um, nuclear has been at a halt. Uh, so we're sitting around 5% overall. And then our next biggest, the sixth one here is hydropower. Notice in this list, something that might be surprising to you is even with all this talk about renewable energy, that doesn't break the top six. Um, so hydropower certainly is a renewable source, but typically we, we talk about solar and wind and all those other sources of energy. That all fits under this other category in this um, pie chart. So 1.5%, at least in 2015, um, came from solar, wind, uh, and those sorts of things. It hasn't changed a whole lot um, from then until now. It is changing, and we'll, we'll see some of those more recent graphs as well. Now, this is used in many different ways. This petroleum uh, is used primarily for transportation. You can see 92% of transportation comes from petroleum. Natural gas uh, is typically used in industrial, 
residential and commercial for heating homes, and now more and more recently, uh, electric power. Uh, and then coal is primarily electric power and so on. If we place these main sources of energy here, these 10 are the 10 that we're gonna talk about the most in this unit. Um, there are a couple of different categorization things that I, that I expect you to be able to do with these 10 sources of energy. The first is a discussion of primary versus secondary sources of energy. We call something a primary source of energy if it is found in the natural environment. So all 10 of these are considered to be primary sources. Um, that's where the energy starts. Obviously, then we transform it so we can plug our phone in and charge it. A secondary source of energy is a useful transformation. So you're not powering your phone on coal. If you place your phone on a lump of coal, nothing would happen. Um, instead, we transfer it into a secondary source of energy, the primary one being electricity. Electricity is how we store and how we make that energy more useful for the needs that we have, more universally used. Now, secondary energy sources can also kind of fit into a couple other categories of storage. Uh, typically, the most common storage that we talk about for electricity is a battery. But there is another way that we can store power, and that's through hydropower. You can actually pump water back up. If you have a dam, you can put, put water that was down at the bottom of the dam back on top and store that for later. And actually that happens quite a bit, that if there is some extra energy in a hydropower plant, they take that extra energy that hasn't been used uh, because it's hard to store in batteries. That technology is pretty expensive. They just use pumps and use that extra electricity to pump that water back up to the top of the dam. And then they can just open it back up and use that energy later. So it's storing it for a future usage. Now, the ultimate primary source is actually not any of those 10. If you go back and look at those 10 that were there, these 10 here all actually stem primarily from one source. Now, there are some exceptions, geothermal and uranium being those exceptions, but all of these sources of energy can trace their energy back to one primary source, and that is the sun. Um, fossil fuels were once living material, uh, they were either living plants, they were eaten by animals, or just the plants themselves decomposed over many years, were crushed and compressed with high heat and high pressure to become coal or oil or natural gas. Ultimately, that energy came from the sun. The sun allowed the plants to grow, the plants were eaten by animals, and then that process started. Biofuels are the same way. Wind is actually the same way as well, as well as hydropower, because the wind is actually created by different heating of the earth, that air flows from hot to cold, uh, then hydropower is run by the water cycle and that is run by the sun. So one conversation that we're gonna get into a lot this unit is, okay, which one of these is the best? There are 10 sources of energy. How do we choose the source of energy that is most important for us? Now, this is a hard question and there's many different factors that we're gonna be referring to. One is energy density. We'll look at that a little bit today. But then, of course, we have costs and availability and politics and safety and environmental concerns. All of these form one large conversation that isn't an easy one to solve. Um, it would be awesome if we could say, all right, everyone's going to go to solar power that is clean, that is available. But the problem is there's a lot in the way from making that a reality. And that's one of the topics for this unit as well. If we look at the energy generation um, over time, where electricity comes from, you can see certain patterns that for a long time coal was rising, that that's primarily where our electricity came from. Most of the power plants in Minnesota actually were coal. But over time, actually more and more recently in the 2000s, coal has been overtaken by natural gas. Um, in the Twin Cities area, most of our energy that used to come from coal power plants has been converted into natural gas power plants. It's the same facility, they just use a different fuel. You can also see that renewable energy is increasing quite a bit um, in this terms of electricity generation. Petroleum, we don't typically use for electricity. Instead, we use petroleum for transportation to run our cars. Um, you can also see a couple of things here 
you can see that electricity, the usage fluctuates over time. Um, that we use natural gas and coal at different times in the year, and there are peaks, and we'll talk about those peaks. So a conversation that you have probably been a part of at some point is renewable versus non-renewable. You have definitely heard these terms before. If we look at these 10 different sources of energy, not all of these are renewable. Uh, for our purposes here, we consider a renewable resource something that can be renewed in a reasonable time frame. Um, so something like coal technically could be recreated, that the plants that are living today at some point in the future will be coal. But that is so far in the future that it's not really useful to us. We're not going to wait it out and wait until we get more coal based on the animals and plants that live today. So we do not consider coal or any fossil fuels to be renewable. Our primary renewable sources here are solar, geothermal, wind, hydropower, and biomass. Um, uranium, we don't consider to be renewable. Um, technically, there could be some uranium that's being created in some exploding supernova somewhere. Um, but for our purposes here on Earth, the uranium that we have on Earth now is the uranium that we have for the future, um, that we can't depend on that recreating or reproducing itself. Now, any of these sources of energy typically follows the same path, that you have water that is heated up by that source of energy, becomes steam, runs through a turbine, turns a generator, which is made out of battery or made out of uh, coils of wire and magnets, and those magnets running through produce that current, and that electricity is then piped to your home. Now, this process isn't perfectly efficient. We don't harness all of the energy from the coal. Instead, there is going to be some loss along the way. And we can describe the loss using a diagram that we call a Sankey diagram. And it's basically just a fancy arrow that the arrow represents by the thickness of the arrow how much energy is being represented. So the thicker the arrow, the more energy. And it flows from left to right. The energy in produces energy out. And notice, if you have this arrow that tails off the bottom or the top, we call that energy lost. So in this case, if we compare the energy in to the energy out, the energy out is almost always going to be smaller unless there was some input of energy, which means we are losing some of that energy in the process. It is not 100% efficient. So I would like you to look at these two Sankey diagrams for me, A and B. And I would like you to rate which one is more efficient based just on these diagrams and these pictures. All right, if I give you a little bit more information here, you can see the width of the arrow is the energy in. These both have the same amount of energy in, but they have different efficiencies because A has a much larger energy out than B does, which means A is the more efficient process. Sankey diagrams can be used to the extreme. This is what the U.S. energy flow looked like in 2017. You can see all the different sources of energy coming in from a variety of different places and what it was used for coming out. Again, the width of the arrow is what's important here, that the thicker the arrow, the more energy is represented, and all the energy in must equal all the energy out. Okay, cost is another big factor. We'll talk about cost as well. And this is something that is changing. Every single year, I need new, new numbers. This is the most recent cost analysis of renewable energy sources versus conventional. Um, something that you hear people talk about all the time is that renewable is not cost effective. And it used to be the case, but that is changing. Um, and it's changing pretty rapidly. Now, wind and solar panels um, are some of the cheapest forms of energy that are out there. It's just an upfront capital cost to build something that can harness that energy. One final piece that I expect you to know about these 10 different sources of energy is which ones produce CO2. CO2, carbon dioxide, is a major greenhouse gas. You probably know, for the most part, which of these is the case. And it's not as simple as saying it's the, the same ones that are fossil fuels or not renewable. Anything that burns, and that includes biomass, will omit CO2.